Hey YouTubers, it's Tony, and today I'm going to show you how to remove and install your instrument cluster on your 2005 Nissan Altima. Please keep in mind that this process should pertain to just about any year Nissan Altima that you're currently driving. You'll need a couple of screwdrivers to do the job successfully. You'll need a short Phillips screwdriver, a long Phillips screwdriver, a long flathead screwdriver, and I'll show you when and where you need to utilize each of the screwdrivers momentarily. Please keep in mind, guys, that for whatever reason you need to pull out your instrument cluster, maybe the cluster failed, maybe you want to change the light bulb colors, or maybe you need to access the gear shift interlock module that's up behind the instrument cluster. For whatever reason, I promise you, after this video today, you will be able to quickly remove and install your cluster. I want you to also note that I have already gone ahead and loosened and removed screws in an attempt to make this video shorter. So let's get started, guys. One of the first things you want to do is go over to the cluster, and on top of the cluster, there's a cover, guys. You just want to grab it firmly and pull it upward. It will snap loose. The instrument cluster is held in by two Phillips screws, one there and one there. And remember, I've already removed those screws. This is where you will use your short Phillips screwdriver because it will fit up in there with no problems. The next thing you want to do, guys, is you want to go to the steering column and all the plastic around it you need to remove. The plastic is retained by three Phillips screws, which you access from the bottom, guys. So you just have to really get down there and look. And trust me, they're there. This is when you use the long or short flathead screwdriver to kind of wedge between here and pop this loose. This top cover will come off best when the steering wheel is tilted down as far as it can go. To remove the bottom cover, guys, you want to tilt the steering wheel up as far as it can go. And then the bottom cover will easily come off for the most part. Now what you want to do is you want to tilt the stern wheel back down as far as it can go and go back to the instrument cluster. At the bottom of the instrument cluster, you're going to notice this little rubber cover. Well, under that cover on the right side and on the left side, there are two Phillips screws that hold it in. You'll need to remove those. And this is where I use the short screwdriver. I use the short screwdriver to get back up in there to remove them. Once you have removed those two bolts, you can simply grab the instrument cluster, pull it out slowly, and what you're going to notice is you're going to notice the electrical connector plugged into the cluster. I've already gone ahead and disconnected it. To get it loose, guys, see this little tab right here? You just want to push that tab in, and then you can safely pull the electrical connector away from the cluster. Remember that gear shift interlock module that I spoke of, guys? If for some reason you need to replace it, here it is right here, guys. It's retained by one screw. The electrical connector release tab is on the other side of this, so I would recommend just take it out. You can flip the module all the way over and then you can access the release tab just simply push it in and pull it out the next thing you want to do guys is you want to take the electrical connector put it back into the cluster and push it all the way in until it clicks in but i wanted to point out something important to you see these little tabs here guys it does not go on the bottom it goes up top so you want to make sure that you seat it correctly and then you want to put in your two retaining screws on top. So let's do that. Okay, guys, now that I've put in my two retaining screws, the next thing you want to do is you want 
to go back to the cluster and you want to install the two screws that go on the bottom and this will work much better guys when you don't have a cell phone in your hand trying to make a video to get those two screws in guys what i typically do is i will tape the screw to the head of the short screwdriver that allows me to stick that screw back up in there without worrying about the screw falling so what i typically do is i start the uh, threads with the screw turn it a couple times until it grips and then i pull it out and what should happen is the screw should stay in once you get it started and the tape should come out with the screwdriver and then i just simply remove the tape and go back and tighten it up so i'll see if i can uh, demonstrate that for you as well okay guys so what i do is i get it started turn it a couple times until i know it's gripped in and then you can simply pull the screwdriver back and notice that the screw stayed in and now you can remove the tape and go back and tighten up your screw so let's do that for both sides okay guys now that i've secured the two bottom screws and all four screws that hold the instrument cluster is in you simply want to take your top cover put it back into place and push it down and it should just snap back into place the only thing you need to do now guys is put the steering column cover back on so what you want to do is tilt the steering wheel in the upright position as far as it can go and then you can put the bottom cover on and remember guys it works best when you it will go on best when the steering column is in the upright position so make sure it's in the upright position and then just take your time guys it will go on there and then what you want to do is tilt the steering wheel in the downward position and now you can put the top cover in and again just take your time guys the stuff will go in there if you just take your time and then all you need to do guys is just sort of line this up and then put in your three Phillips screws tighten them down and then for the most part guys you have replaced your instrument cluster on your Nissan Altima this stuff is pretty easy guys again the reason why I'm replacing the instrument cluster on this vehicle is because the old one failed oftentimes folks will look at the gas needle and find that it's not working in their vehicle and they assume that it's the instrument cluster nine times out of ten it is not the instrument cluster guys um, the gas needle is controlled by the float which is on your fuel pump on your vehicle so if your gas needle no longer works trust me nine times out of ten it's not the instrument cluster it's the float on the fuel pump that has died and you'll need to replace that to fix your gas needle problem so i hope this video helps guys i apologize um, that it's a lengthy video but i wanted to kind of show you guys step by step how to do this and again remember for the steering column to remove the cover remove your three phillips screws tilt the steering wheel downward as far as it can go you can pull the top cover off then tilt the steering wheel up as far as it can go and then you can pull the bottom cover off remember the bottom cover will only go on and come off best if the steering wheel is tilted in the up position so again guys thanks for watching this video i hope it helps take care